Okay, let's see the audio settings here. I was not able to hear. Subopi repeating after me. Can you still hear me, Subopi? I can still hear, but I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you now. But are you able to hear me? All right. Yes, I can hear. I was hearing before too. Okay. I think uh, it's some sort of setting. I connected my webcam. Uh, it's somehow thinking that the USB has audio and that the port that it's connected to actually doesn't. Today we are reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, I believe, chapter number eight, verse number 26. Let me share my screen. Drishyateva. Um, Are you able to see my screen? Yes. You should say Aam. Um. Aam <laughs> um means yes in Sanskrit. 
Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Okay, we're reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter number eight, Attaining the Supreme, and text number 26. Shukla Krishna Gati Hyete. Shukla Krishna Gati Hyete. Jagata Shashvate Mate. Jagata Shashvate Mate. Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim. Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim. Anyaya Vartate Punaha. Anyaya Vartate Punaha. Shukla Krishna Gati Hyete. Shukla Krishna Gati Hyete. Jagata Shashvate Mate. Jagata Shashvate Mate. Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim. Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim. Anyaya Vartate Punaha. Anyaya Vartate Punaha. Shukla Krishna Gati Hyete. Shukla Krishna Gati Hyete. Jagata Shashvate Mate. Jagata Shashvate Mate. Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim. Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim. Anyaya Vartate Punaha. Anyaya Vartate Punaha. Can you please chant? Shukla Krishna Gati Hyete. Shukla Krishna Gati Hyete. Jagata Shashvate Mati. Jagata Shashvate Mati. Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim. Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim. Anyaya Vartate Punaha. Yeah, <laughs> Ekaya Yatyana Vrittim Anyaya Vartate Punaha Anyaya Vartate Punaha Anyone else would like to chant? Okay, so we'll do word for word. Shukla Shukla Light Light Krishna Krishna and darkness and darkness gati gati ways of passing ways of passing he he certainly certainly ete ete these two these two jagataha jagataha of the material world of the material world shashvate Shashvate of the Vedas. Of the Vedas. Mate. Mate. In the opinion. In the opinion. Ekaya. Ekaya. By one. By one. Yati. Yati. Goes. Goes. Anavrittim. Anavrittim. To no return. To no return. Anyaya. Anyaya. By the other. By the other. Avartate. Avartate. Comes back. Comes back. Unaha. Unaha. Again. 
again. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. According to Vedic opinion, there are two ways of passing from this world, one in light and one in darkness. When one passes in light, he does not come back. But when one passes in darkness, he returns. Purport. The same description of departure and return is quoted by Acharya Baladeva Vidya Bhushana from the Chandogya Upanishad 5, 10, 3 through 5. Those who are fruitive laborers and philosophical speculators from time immemorial are constantly going and coming. Actually, they do not attain ultimate salvation for they do not surrender to Krishna. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Mihilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhajate Girim Yatkripatamaham Vande Shri Gurum Dinatarinam Paramanandama Dhavam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mishwaram Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripasindubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I wonder why Kweku is not here today. I was thinking of him today before the class. So this chapter, uh, as you must have heard by now, those who are attending regularly multiple times, uh, one of the questions that Arjuna asked was, how uh, do we remember Krishna at the time of death? And Krishna has uh, been talking about that particular topic, um, how to attain the Supreme, uh, how to think of him at, and attain the Supreme at the time of death. So Krishna has described the yogic process and in that process, not only meditating, but also the time at which a person leaves the body are also very significant. Broadly, that time is divided as Krishna and Shukla. Krishna means darkness and Shukla means light. In a month, according to lunar calendar, uh, there are four weeks. Uh, two weeks are considered Shukla Paksha and the other two are Krishna Paksha. Meaning when the moon is uh, waxing, it is called Shukla Paksha and when it is waning, it is called Krishna Paksha. So we are familiar with this term. And in our Gaudiya Vaishnava calendar, we call it as, what do we call? What are the two pakshas in the Gaudiya calendar? Shukla Paksha and Krishna Paksha. Uh, we use Gaura Paksha, right? Uh, I want to make sure, look at the one of the calendar on your Yes, it says, I don't know if you are able to see, uh, I don't think so, but it says uh, Gaura Paksha, right? 
and let's go Trayodashi, and then it says Krishna Paksha. So we, because we start with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, appearance as the starting day of our calendar for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, so we go by Gauda Paksha and uh, Shukla Paksha. Uh, sorry, Gaura and Krishna. Gaura Paksha and Krishna Paksha. So it is nice, right? We have Lord Krishna and we have Lord Gauranga. Uh, both of them are there in the calendar. Instead of just saying dark and light, we can take Krishna to mean Lord Krishna and Gaura to mean Lord Gauranga. Gaura Paksha and Krishna Paksha. So however, in this context, um, it is light and darkness. And what is the destination of each of them? So those who pass, first of all, they must be yogis. It's not just anybody who died in an accident. They must be on the path of yoga. They, when they pass away in Uttarayana, during the daytime, Shukla Paksha, all these uh, qualifiers are there, which represents the uh, light. They travel the path of light and then they attain liberation. But those who pass away during Krishna Paksha, during night time, during Dakshinayana, and these things are mentioned, uh, they go to the moon planet, they enjoy some material delights, and but they have to come back again. But the other path, they don't have to come back. So now here, there's a word Shashvate. And Shashvata means uh, eternal. And here Srila Prabhupada translated as of the Vedas. So Gopi, do you have any idea about Shashvata using for representation of the Vedas? Probably not. Or she may not be in, the, in her phone or computer. So here Prabhupada, uh, that which he, this eternal opinion obviously must be a Vedic opinion because the Vedas are also eternal. So it is taken as Jagataha Shashvate Mati, this opinion that those who pass during the night, they have to come back during the darkness, period of darkness, but in the light, they do not need to come back. So these are the uh, two paths that have been uh, discussed in the previous verses elaborately. Uh, I'm not going, uh, going to go into those details, but one thing Srila Prabhupada mentions is uh, Srila Bharadeva Vidya Bhushana mentions the same thing from Chandogya Upanishad. Ataya ime grama ishta purte dattam ityupasate te dhumam Abhisambhavanti, dumad ratrim ratrer aparapaksham, aparapaksha dhyan shad dakshinaiti, masan stan naite samatsaram abhi prapnuvanti, masebhya pitrilokam pitriloka dakasham akasha chandramasam, esha somo raja tad devanam annam tam deva bakshyanti, tasmin yavat sama sampatam. <laughs> so everything described uh, in all these previous verses that how they, by going through different deities, there are different deities representing the deity of the night, deity of Dakshinayana, and deity of the Pitriloka, and eventually they reach the deity of the moon, Somagar. But after their punyas are exhausted, Kshine Punye Matiloka Mishanti, they come back to uh, this uh, planet. But uh, they follow the path of fire guard and the sun and the deity of the day. And, and you know, eventually they go uh, to the Brahman and they don't have to uh, come back. So this is, these two paths are there. So now those who are uh, fruitive laborers and philosophical speculators are constantly coming and going. Actually, they do not attain salvation because they do not surrender to Krishna. And in the next verse, 
Krishna elaborates on this point of what should be the mood of devotees towards these two paths. Let's read the next verse. Naite sriti parthajanan yogi muhyati kashchana tasmat sarveshu kaleshu yoga yukto bhava arjuna. Although the devotees know these two paths, O Arjuna, they are never bewildered. Therefore, be always fixed in devotion. So now, okay, Kweku is here. I was thinking of you, Kweku. <laughs> so there are these two paths. Caught up a little bit earlier on, but I've, I've arrived. <laughs> you have arrived, okay, I thought of you. And you're here, thank you. So there are these two paths. Now, it, the way, one of the important things in these Sanskrit verses is the word yogi, okay? Because in the previous verses as well, the word yogi is used. But here is, he's saying, although the yogi knows these two things, he didn't say bhakta. Naite sriti partha yogi janan muhyati kashchana. Yogi ete sriti partha janan na muhyati kashchana. Yogi is not bewildered. But Srila Prabhupada translated yogi as a devotee. Any thoughts on why? Did you ask why? Yeah. Um, you know what? I think I've thought about this before. Sorry if my phone goes off in the back. but um, I've thought about this before. And my conclusion was that a yogi is supposed to be a devotee. So if you're a yogi who's practicing any other kind of yoga and you are missing your devotional aspect, you have missed the whole point. Mm -hmm. And that's my understanding that you cannot, because from the people that, um, the, from the gurus that I've listened to that um, are proponents of the other paths of yoga, um, like maybe Advaita, Vedanta, you know, the Jnana yoga and all that, they say that, you know, you have to be doing devotional service. And that is where the knowledge and the wisdom, that's where it comes from. It comes from the almighty himself. So if you miss that part, then you missed the whole, whatever you're meditating for, whatever you're on a path of knowledge for, even, even if you live life, you're trying to use karma yoga and all that, you miss out on the main important thing. Yes. The yeah, final, final, final destination. Yeah. So the, even though the word yogi has been used throughout the chapter and it was the yogi who is passing out at night time or passing away at either night or daytime, Uttarayana, Dakshinayana. And again, Krishna is talking about the yogi. One of the important things is uh, who is actually a true yogi? In the, in the Dhyana Yoga chapter at the beginning, Krishna says, Sri Bhagavan Vacha Anashrita Karma Phalam Karyam Karma Karoti Yahasa Sanyasi Cha Yogi Cha Naniragnir Nachakriya. Okay. So Krishna is equating sannyasa, yoga, and bhakti. All of them, as a person who is doing activities without attachment to the results and of course by thinking of Krishna all the time which is says at the end of this sixth chapter uh, how does it go at the end of the sixth chapter Krishna says yogi naam api sarvesham mat gate nantaratmana shadhavan bhajate yomam same yukta tamomataha so Krishna is saying amongst all the yogis that person who is always meditating upon him in his heart. 
He's the topmost of all the yogis. So yogi could mean karma yogi, bhakti yogi, jnana yogi, all these type of yogis. And we may generally think a yogi is a dhyana yogi. And Krishna, in this, you know, at the end of sixth chapter, the topmost yogi is described to be the bhakti yogi. Clearly, he mentions uh, tasmat yogi bhava arjuna. Therefore, you become a yogi or arjuna. Tapasvi bhyodiko yogi jnani bhyodi. Jnani Vyogi Mato Dikaha Karmi Bhyashadiko Yogi Tasmad Yogi Bhavarjuna. A yogi is superior to a person who is doing austerities, to a person engaged in knowledge, to a person engaged in activities. Therefore, you become a yogi. So it seems yogi is the topmost position, but immediately he says the devotional yogi is the topmost yogi. Shraddhavan Bhajate Yoma. Okay, that person is the topmost yogi. So, however, in the chapter, Eight, when he's describing the different processes the yogi is engaged. If you have seen eight, verse number 14, uh, Nitya Yukta Yogina. Okay, the, the Yukta Yogina, yogi who is properly engaged. So when you say this word Yukta, Yoga Yukto Bhava Arjuna, the smart Sarvesh in this verse that we are reading today has Yoga Yukto Bhava Arjuna. And in the verse 8, number 14, which specifically Prabhupada said, this is about devotional service, Nitya Yukta Se Yoginaha, uh, that person is also a Bhakti Yogi. Okay? So there are Abhyasa Yoga Yuktena Chetasa Nanya Gamina. Mm. How you can attain Krishna is mentioned there. Bhaktya Yukto Yoga Valena Chaiva. Prayana Kale Bhaktya Yukto. So this word Yukta is very, very important. He's not just simply meditating on something, but he's properly connected and engaged. Uh, yukta, uh, more than the word yogi, the word yukta gives this idea of being connected. Yogi could mean just somebody who's, who is in samadhi, who is meditation, but yukta is, uh, uses that particular uh, verbal root, which implies that, connect, that connection to be connected. Uh, so this yoga yukta is what Krishna is talking about in this particular verse, not those general yogis who may have, you know, uh, trying on their own without being dependent on the Krishna. In the last session, I talked about two types, the, the monkey method and the cat method. Does anyone remember those two methods? The monkey method and the cat method. Quick, I see your hands up. Yes, brother. Um, you know, I was just thinking as well, you know, there's a place in when I was listening to Bhagavad Gita and Krishna clearly says, he goes, he says a couple of verses. I can't, you know, but I don't know if it's still in the chapter eight, but he, he, he goes on, on, on and says, this person is dearest to me. This one is dearest to me. This one is dearest to me. And he was in that aspect, he was really referring to devotees. Yes. That specific yes. chapter actually is called Bhakti Yoga. The, the verses that right. are mentioning are from chapter 12. But Sorry. the also interesting thing that came to mind was that, you know, there's, there's, um, Krishna wants you to see everything in Krishna. And him in everything, and or I don't know how to put this, but see Krishna in everything and everything in Krishna, right? Now, that mean? That, to what be honest, as a devotee, that is how you have to look at life. See everything in Krishna and Krishna in everything. That means if, you, if I look at you, brother, I should see Krishna, not your physical body. But what does that mean? To me, what it means is that Krishna is everywhere. And he's in all of us. And when it comes to the physical person in that aspect, he's in all of us. And if you are looking at your fellow brother or sister and looking at him as Krishna is embodied in him, then you are going to treat that person with the divinity that they, they deserve. But beyond that, even in regular everyday life, 
things that happen or what we engage in, if you look at it in Krishna's light and everything in Krishna, that is how he also wants you to see your actions as well. But as a devotee, having that knowledge is really the basis of jnana yoga as well. That yes, is it, it's a good point that you're bringing up. Uh, I will definitely address this one, uh, the right. one you were mentioning about the ability to uh, see Krishna uh, in everything and everything in Krishna, Krishna in everything. Yomam uh, pashyati sarvatra sarvanchamai pashyati tasyaham sulabhav partha nitya yuktasya yoginaha I believe it is from uh, chapter 6. Yes, Yomam pashyati sarvatra sarvanchamai pashyati Asyaham na pranashyami, sachame na pranashyati. Uh, I misquoted last two lines. I wonder where they are from. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, it may be somewhere else, but definitely that's what is there. So I, I'll talk about them. that. That that's an interesting comment that you made. I will talk about that towards the end of the class. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, does anyone remember the, the question I asked? The monkey. The monkey and the cat. Yes, exactly. in the mon in the monkey method, the person is trying to aspire to Krishna by his ability, whereas in the cat method, uh, Krishna is helping him, you yes. know, come to him. Yes, the cat is carrying the kitten. A devotee is carried by Krishna because of his devotion to the Lord. The monkey who is very uh, is holding the mother, and and on its own strength, uh, that is like. Those who do not depend on Krishna, uh, but they independently try to, you know, approach the Supreme. It doesn't work like that because, you know, Krishna is the Supreme. Uh, they miss the point. They miss the point and they uh, think they themselves are Supreme. Uh, and I'll address this, this point. The, the, jnana, the jnanis, as well as most of the yogis, they follow that kind of path, uh, but a devotee follow the path just like a uh, cat, you know, the kitten, where the kitten is taken care of by the cat. So yoga, it is this specific verse is talking about a devotee. That's why Prabhupada translates, although the devotee knows these two paths, so Arjuna, they're never bewildered. They, therefore, be always fixed in devotion. And again, Prabhupada translates the word yoga yukta uh, as being engaged in devotion, sarva, tasmat sarveshu kaleshu, yoga yukto bhavajuna. So a devotee is not bewildered knowing those two paths. So we'll read in the purport why that is so. Kweko, would you like to read the purport, please? Are you able to see the screen? Yes. Yeah, if you are able to see the screen, could you read the purport? Oh, bro, sorry. I'm in Panera Bread right now. I just thought you were asking if we could see it. I wanted to respond for you. Oh, okay. You, you, if anybody can help out, I'll really be happy. Okay. I'm picking up something for Panera Bread. I'm going back to my car. Okay, no problem. No, no, I'll read, don't worry. Krishna is here advising Arjuna that he should not be disturbed by the different paths the soul can take when leaving the material world. The devotee of the Supreme Lord should not worry whether he will depart by arrangement or by accident. The devotee should be firmly established in Krishna consciousness and chant Hare Krishna. He should know that concern over either of these two paths is troublesome. And the best way to be observed in Krishna consciousness is to be always dovetailed in his service. And this will make one's path to the spiritual kingdom safe, certain, and direct. The word yoga yukta is especially significant in this verse. One who is firm in yoga is constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness in all his activities. Sri Rupa Goswami advises anasattasya vishayam yatharham upayunjataha. One should be unattached in material affairs and do everything in Krishna consciousness. By this system, which is called Yukta Vairagya, 
one attains perfection. Therefore, the devotee is not disturbed by these descriptions because he knows that his passage to the supreme abode is guaranteed by devotional service. So this is very important. Uh, once we read these different paths, then it appears, okay. And also we know example of Bhishma Dev who left his body in Uttarayana while he was, you know, glancing at the beautiful form of Krishna. And he waited until Uttarayana and then he left. So people ask, because Bhishma Dev also waited, he is passing away at a particular time important. So Krishna is answering here. Na muhyanti kashchana ete ete sriti partha janan yogi muhyati kashchana na ete yogi muhyati kashchana yogi is not bewildered even after knowing these two paths. Why? Because he previously said those who leave their bodies thinking of me, then they'll come to me. So the main point is to think of Krishna at the time of death. That once a devotee knows that, no problem. He may pass away in a road accident. We have the great devotee, one of the great devotees, His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami. Uh, he passed away in an accident. We have devotees who passed away giving classes. Who passed away giving a class? I heard about one of Prabhupada's disciples. Gaur Govind Maharaj. Yes, that's what I heard. I heard Gaur Govind Maharaj passed away uh, like yeah. that at that time. So many, you know, so many de devotees passing away with bead bag in their hands. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Devotees, they're not this kind of yogis who are, uh, you know, sitting in yogic posture and doing all these things. They constantly meditate on the Lord through the process of bhakti. They try to keep Krishna in their consciousness. Very... Uh, it's simple when they are have love for Krishna, it's easy. But developing love for Krishna is a difficult process. So how do we get to that process? Prabhupada is saying by uh, constantly chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Learning to bring Krishna into our life in all situations. If we are able to bring Krishna into our life in every situation, then it becomes easy. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mamanusmara yudhyacha ananya cheta satatam yomam smarati nityashaha tasyaham sulabha partha nitya yoga nitya yuktasya yoginaha. I was confusing this with the other words that uh, I was telling quickly. So this one who is always uh, thinking of Krishna. But how can we always think of Krishna? Unless we connect what we are doing with Krishna consciousness, we cannot think of Krishna always. Suppose if somebody is uh, setting up things for a festival, that is not sitting in yoga and meditating. But then that person who is setting up, oh, we are setting this up, so we'll have a book table here, and the books are about Krishna and they'll be chanting beads. People will chant Krishna's holy name. And we are cleaning this temple so that we can have a kirtan here. Uh, so it is somehow connected to Krishna. And that activity reminds us about Krishna. Therefore, Prabhupada is saying the word yoga yukta is significant. The process of Krishna consciousness is safe. The reason it's safe is because there is no risk of being abandoned. In the example of cat, Krishna will hold us. The business of the monkey is risky. It's not, it's not safe. But the kitten is safe. Uh, the, the 
kitten is here. What do you call the baby monkey? Is there a name for a baby monkey? Like puppy, kitten. Does anyone know? Infant, <laughs> just an infant like a child. That's funny. You got jokes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Darwin. <laughs> I, I was thinking, cracking my brain, like, oh my God, <laughs> what? I've never thought about this before. Right. All right, good one. <laughs> so, safe. Srila Prabhupada is saying Yoga Yukta, Krishna consciousness is safe. It's certain. It's certain because there's no risk like the other, this, this thing here going on. When are you going to leave your body? Where are you going to leave your body? There's no uncertainty. It's certain, safe, certain, and direct. It's direct because you're, the object of your worship is Krishna. There's no going around and speculation and this and that. Very simple. I'm worshiping Krishna. I'm going to Krishna. It's a very direct process. Krishna consciousness. There's no indirect methods. You do something else to get here. No, this is what you're doing and this is what you're going to do eternally. Love of God. Krishna Prema. Whereas other paths, they may eventually bring us to Krishna. They may take you through indirect route to put, it, put you on then the direct path. But Krishna consciousness is very direct. So therefore, Krishna consciousness is recommended and therefore what, what is there to worry about? It's not bewildered because it's certain, because it's safe, because it's direct. And this Yoga Yukta is explained by Rupa Goswami nicely. Anasaktasya Vishayan Yatarham Upayunjataha Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yuktam Vairagya Muchate. Now it is recommended to be detached to things. Vairagya. Raga means attachment. Vairagya means without attachment. Now the yogi may be, he is practicing Vairagya, going to a secluded place and trying to you know, sit down in a yogi pasture and do all those things. A jnani may be saying, neti, neti, not this, not this, rejecting everything, na iti, na iti. But a devotee, he actually uses yata arham upayunjata. Upayunja means utilize. We also have this word upayoga in some languages. I don't know any Telugu speaking audience here, but upayoga in Telugu also means to use something. But how do you use it? Yata arham. Arha. Arha means capability. It's usefulness. Depending on its usefulness, we'll use it in the service of the Lord. For example, is a laptop useful in the service of the Lord? Is it useful or not? Is a laptop? It can be. It is capable of serving Krishna, but how? We are on Zoom right now on laptops, right? Right now, right? Not doing some mundane things, but using Krishna conscious things. So this is called yukta. Again, yoga yukta bhavarjuna. Means using what is usable, what is capable in Krishna service. This is called yukta vairagya. But how should we use it? Anasaktasya. Anasakta. Asakti means attachment. Anasakti means no attachment. Using it without attachment. Now what does that mean? Using it without attachment. Using it without attachment is knowledge. No <laughs> more for what it really is. I mean, I know you asked what does that mean, but that's what came into my head when you were saying that. Right. So it means it means using it for the service of the Lord, not for material purposes. Right? Okay. Otherwise, you get trapped in misery and suffering. Exactly, exactly. And also, if this is not there, use something else. It's not that Krishna consciousness means only laptop. 
Sometimes right. may, somebody may say, oh, because you have laptop, you are able to be Krishna conscious. I don't have laptop. Therefore, I am not attending classes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can attend on the phone, you can attend live, there are other means, right? So there the attachment is for the laptop, not for the class. <laughs> so not being attached to things, but when we have something that is capable for Krishna service, we'll use it in Krishna service. We don't artificially renounce it. And when we don't have, we don't lament because there are many ways to be engaged in Krishna service. Whatever is capable, uh, whatever is useful, we go and use in the service of Krishna. If we need to acquire something and use, yes, we will acquire and use. But if we don't have, then we don't say that it is an obstacle. For, oh, now I cannot do my Krishna consciousness. For example, it is recommended to chant on the beads, holy names. And one guy stopped chanting. He said, why? My beads broke. I don't know. I'm not chanting now. Is that a good idea? Say that again, sorry. When the beads break, I will stop my chanting until I'll get new beads. No, you can use, count with your little fingers. You know that, you know the spots, the divisions in your fingers, you can use that to count. Yeah, so, so the point here is, yes, you use in Krishna service, but it's not, you should not, it's not that, oh, I cannot, uh, I, see the point. And I don't want to be Krishna conscious. I right. see the point you were making from earlier. And I'm traveling, I didn't take bath, therefore I cannot chant. No, we can be Krishna conscious. We can make adjustments to be Krishna consciousness, to be Krishna conscious in a proper way. So it is very important to know Yukta Vairagya, how to use what and when uh, to be Krishna conscious. And in this way, if we are always Yoga Yukta, if you're always connected to Krishna. And then, even though these two paths are there, a devotee is not bewildered. And next verse uh, talks in more details about this concept, is how we always think of Krishna. And one of the important things is we have to prepare for death. And it's very, very important to cultivate this. To be able to uh, stay in Krishna consciousness throughout our life. Then only we can think of Krishna at the time of death. Otherwise, it is not possible. Parikshit Maharaj, a great personality, he got a notice, death notice, that he will die in seven days. He was the emperor of the world. Entire Everything on this planet was under his rule. And he was so powerful that when he was in the womb of his mother, Krishna personally came and protected him when he was uh, struck by an atomic weapon. So he's very dear to Krishna, great devotee. He could have asked Krishna that Krishna, I don't want to die. But what he did is as soon as he got the death notice, he immediately gave up everything. He was a king. All of us have our favorite things that we don't want to give up. It may be a pan in your kitchen. It may be your cool, nice peeler that peels nicely. Or a rolling pin. Or a favorite brand of blender. It could be a computer. It could be an iPhone. It could be something that is very difficult for us to give up. Our bank balances and all those things. Maharaj Parikshit gave up his, his bow and arrow. He gave up his horses that will take him to different places with greater speed on the battlefield. He gave up his armor. He gave up his beautiful crowns. He gave up his position of ordering, instructing, he gave up his position of protecting others. Everything he gave up. And simply he spent his day and night, 24 hours for those seven days, 
that's the original 24 by 7. We have this on call 24 by 7. The original 24 by 7 is Maharaja Parikshit. So 24 by 7, he was hearing Krishna Kata. And that's how, and at that time he will ask Shukadeva Goswami, what is the duty of a person in his human life, particularly the duty of a person who is about to die? And what did Parikshit, what did Shukadeva Goswami say? Does anyone know? What is the duty of a person in the human life, particularly of that person who is about to die? Surrender everything to Krishna. Here, here, Krishna Kata. Getting close. <laughs> Chanting the holy name. Getting close. That's what this chapter is about. Oh, no. Again, I remember the remember the lotus feet. Yes, remember Krishna at the time. Ante Narayana Smriti. This is what Shukadeva says. Advanced view. Etavan Sankhya Yoga Bhyam Swadharma Parinishthaya Janmalabha Parapunsa Ante Narayana Smriti. Ante Narayana Smriti. That is the goal. But that's attained by Sarveshuka. Tasmat Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavan Ishvaro Hari Shrotavya Kirtitavya Smartavya Chechatavaya. Those who want to be free from this fear, always hear about, glorify and remember the Lord and particularly at the time of death, Ante Narayana Smati, remember Krishna at the time of death. That is the goal of life. But that is attained by continuous practice. But we cannot sit down and chant 24 hours a day. It is not possible. Therefore, we have to engage in activities. Activities. The activities that may be attractive to us. Somebody likes reading. Somebody likes kirtan. Somebody likes cooking. Somebody likes deity worship. Somebody likes uh, making arrangements. Somebody likes book distribution. So many different, somebody likes making garlands or sewing outfits, outfits for the deities. We have to engage in activities, physical activities, mental activities for the service of the Lord. We cannot sit down and 24 hours. That's not what it is. That's not what Yoga Yukta means. Yoga Yukta means what Rupa Goswami is saying. Yatarham upayunjataha. Use our abilities, use our positions in the service of the Lord. Connect them with Krishna consciousness. And through that way, cultivate remembering Krishna. And through that way, also continuously chant and hear as the main processes in any of the services. That's why during Aarti, there is Kirtan. Even during Yajna, Prabhupada had devotees do Kirtan. So through these processes, we continuously uh, facilitate, create ourselves around us an, atmo an atmosphere where we are able to think of Krishna. And through that process at the time of death, we will intensify the hearing and chanting process. As we approach closer to death, the more hearing and chanting will do and that will help us to remember the Lord at the time of death. So that's what a yoga yukta is supposed to do. And I will get to what Peku was saying about seeing Krishna in everything. Yomam Pashyati Sarvatra Sarvanchamai Pashyati. Again, I forgot the last two lines. Tasyaham na pranashyami Sachaname pranashyati. Sachame na pranashyati. Sachame na pranashyati. Yes. So... Now, what does this mean, seeing Krishna everywhere means? Now, Krishna says multiple things. It has to be understood as a wholesome theme. 
one of the things he says in chapter number 9 is maya tatam idam sarvam jagata vyakta murtina matstane sarva bhutane nacaham teshvavastitah chapter number 9 and this is the most confidential knowledge gohyatamam knowledge krishna is telling to arjuna and the king of knowledge he say and he starts with this one here maya tatam idam sarvam i am pervaded everywhere the great was saying krishna is present everywhere jagat avyakta murtina but how he is pervaded in his personal form he is pervaded everywhere in his unmanifest form so he is present everywhere that means in everything also matstani sarva bhutani everything is situated in me as well but then again he says nachaham keshvavastit he arjun but i am not in them yes what does that mean yes what does yes. that mean that Sorry. mean what is pervaded is krishna's impersonal energetic form energy form and what is not pervaded is the energetic who is the person as a person he is staying he is there as krishna as the beautiful shama sundara two armed form is existing as a person in his spiritual abode but at the same time he has the ability to enter into all of us as the super soul into every single atom he has the power to enter through his consciousness because his consciousness is all pervading therefore he knows exactly what quake is thinking what i am thinking because he is he is pervaded through his consciousness so krishna is present in everything and everything is present in krishna what does that mean this entire material universe is nothing but energy of the lord so we are all situated in his energy therefore we are present in him in his energy and at the same time he is also present in everything but at the same time he is outside everything now we cannot make that claim only krishna can make that claim so krishna as a person is there but through his energies through his consciousness he is present in everything so when he says i am in kweku it means as a person he is separately there but he is also through his energy and consciousness he is also there in his heart as super soul so when we, then what is our aspiration our aspiration is to see him in everything mean when what does it mean when it, that a devotee sees krishna in everything means devotee sees the purpose for which the krishna expands into everybody devotee sees the purpose of this material energy that oh everything belongs to krishna this is krishna's energy therefore i have to use it in krishna's service so he is seeing krishna in everything means he is seeing that this is krishna's energy it's meant for his service therefore i i'll engage it in his service i'll see this person krishna is situated in him as a super soul to take him back to the spiritual world where he can have a happy relationship with krishna so therefore i respect him because his body is a temple krishna is present in him but unfortunately he forgot krishna therefore i'll remind him of krishna and will both engage in krishna's service so this is the mood right when people do not understand this what they think is oh you are krishna and i am krishna to correct that misunderstanding krishna is saying no i am not in you and i am not in him therefore he is not krishna you are not krishna so that we don't make that mistake krishna specifically says nachaham teshu avasthita i am not in there why is he saying i am not in there so that we don't mistake ourselves to be krishna so that we understand that krishna is a person and as a personality is also there separately 
So I just wanted to mention this so that there is no confusion. Uh, so with that, it's eight o'clock, I'll stop. But if there are any couple of questions or comments, I can take. You know, I definitely have like a comment on that one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I think I just have, a, my comment is to add to what you were saying. It's more like we are all his creation. So mm -hmm. we emanate from him, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he is in us per se. I don't know if I ha I understand it. I just don't know how to put it in words to bring it out. You know yeah. what I mean? you're, you're right. But, yeah. But, but, like, but yeah. just as you explained it, it's correct. It's just I don't know how to. I wanted to add something to it, but I. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. I just wanted to make sure. Just not coming in the words. Anyway, thank you very much. Beautiful class, and I enjoyed it. Thank you as always. Thank you for your attention. It gives me enthusiasm. <laughs> Sorry for my background. There was one time you were talking. I didn't know I was not on mute. No. So. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your enthusiasm. That thank you. you. I get it. I get it. I get it from Krishna and from associating with you and everybody else that, you know, inspires me every day. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments, questions? Okay, we'll stop here. Shrimad Bhagavad Gita ki. Shila Prabhupada. Were you going to say something, Gita Malamadhani? Yeah, I was just going to ask the question that when Krishna takes the human form, mm -hmm. it looks like he's in the three modes of nature, but really he's not, right? I mean... No, so it, it's not like he takes the human form. That's the form he has, right? Um, right, his original he makes form. It, he yes. makes, the, the better way of saying is he makes it visible to us. Uh, he makes that form visible to us. And it does look like human form. I mean, in the sense of, you know, two hands and all, and all these things, right? So he's not in the three modes. He explains that clearly in chapter seven, right? That uh, I am above these modes. And in fact, those who surrender to him can get out of these modes just by surrendering unto him, right? They can get out of these three modes of material nature. But the activities look like the same activities that we do in the three modes in the sense, you know. Correct, yeah, that, that's what I was getting, that it looks like it's the yes. same activities that, that is in yes. the three modes, you know. Because somewhere I read that when Krishna takes the human form, it, I think even in the Srimad Bhagavad, that he, he takes the three modes and that kind of confused me. In a sense, not really, you know what I'm saying? It appears. It, it, appears, it appears like, like exactly. Yeah. Like it appears yes. like he's in the three modes, you know. It appears like he was a passionate husband with his wife. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, so like those, a, are like... All, <laughs> those are all transcendental activities. Uh, we should not think spirituality means no activities, no emotions. In fact, true emotions exist at spiritual level. At material level, the emotions are not uh, real in the true sense. The reason I say that is we say love. Everything is temporary. They just disappear in a moment. Even a father and son may fight like anything. right? We see in the history that the son kills the father and brothers and becomes the king. Right? right. All these, it, it's so superfluous and so temporary but spiritual emotions are permanent. And that is the reason why Krishna will never abandon us. He's situated even in the heart of a demon, uh, looking, uh, waiting for the demon to turn back to Krishna. So the true emotions actually exist in the spiritual world. In the material world, they're a reflection. And because we lost those true spiritual relationship and emotions with Krishna, we are looking for them in the material world and we are thinking, this person is Krishna. I'm going to invest my relationship in him and we get disappointed again and again and again. And Krishna is sitting right there in the heart waiting for us to, to have that relationship. So unless it is in God, it will not be there in the living entities. But we have a perverted uh, mechanism in the, in the material world. So we have to remove the perversion not that absence of everything is spirituality is a wrong idea. 
Uh, mm -hmm. We have to remove the materialism from it and the true spirituality uh, should be taken. Very good. But, point. Th but those who were existing when Krishna was here on earth, even if they did not accept him as God, <laughs> have to be extremely fortunate, right? I mean, exactly. Yeah. And they were actually attracted to him, right? I mean, uh, even uh, Jerasandha for a moment is like, wow, it's so beautiful. Right? Mm -hmm. And Kaliya, say Kaliya also, right? They were like, wow, who is this? You know, they, they, even the demons, they get attracted to Krishna. But, you know, because of their ahankar, which is very big, then they kind of, you know, collapse uh, in, their, in their understanding. But it seems like how can somebody not transform what Krishna is personally present before them, right? Yes, the envy is so powerful, right? Uh, wow. Envy, envy is so powerful. Envy is so powerful that it will make us do that. Yeah. Yeah. Even right in presence of the Lord. Yeah, uh, I mean, we, we do things in even front of the deity sometimes, right? Our envy yeah. doesn't go away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that is why association of devotees, mercy of devotees, uh, is said to be more powerful uh, than than Krishna's because uh, devotees are very kind. They will they keep on tolerating, keep on helping us. Uh, mm -hmm. And what happens is we carry their mood towards Krishna. Right? What mood we should have towards Krishna? We mm -hmm. kind of uh, get it from the devotees. So devotees right. are the holders of that devotion to the Lord. Right, right. right. That's why Radharani can give. That's why uh, devotees can give. Uh, that's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the only Krishna who can give is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right? Because <laughs> he, he's the holder of that devotion. We, he borrowed it from Radharani. So he can. Right. Give. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu, for explaining. That. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll stop here. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Ki jai. One check for the best check of pass in the day. The chair for Titanam Pavan. Vaishnavi Bion Amona Mahan and the Koti Vaishnavan. The key jai. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. He's going to carry a Prabhu ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.